Howdy ho, good neighbor. Well, today we're talking about when homeless attack. Yes, that's right. The homeless are attacking people on the streets of San Francisco and they're not even going to jail. The judge just lets them out and says, come back. These mentally ill people are being released back on the streets of San Francisco and people's safety are in danger. Well, watch this next news story and the newscast says you need to become crazier than the crazy. That's what they said. You need to become crazier than the crazy to fight the homeless back. So watch yourself and watch yourself in the city of San Francisco. Easy for me to say. So with that, watch this newscast and tell me what you think about you have to be crazier than the crazy to fight back on the streets of San Francisco. Watch this video and tell me what you think. Using a recent case in San Francisco, shining a light on the criminal justice system. We're talking about what's in this video here. It stems from this assault case. A woman attacked right outside of her apartment building. The suspect in this case released from jail by a judge just 72 hours later. In case of you, crime reporter Henry Lee has been digging into this case and he joins us now live from San Francisco with much more. Henry. Well, Andre, we're outside the building where this attack happened and where the victim is thinking about leaving now that the suspect is back on the streets. Austin James Vincent was freed by a judge after being charged with this terrifying attack that was caught on video. Vincent has no local address. His whereabouts are now unknown. I can't stop thinking about the fact that this man is free after what he did to me. Hadiz, the woman who was attacked, doesn't want her last name used. She now wants the judge who released him recalled. That judge is Christine Van Aken of San Francisco Superior Court. In a tweet, Hanese wrote, I need answers, and tags former Governor Jerry Brown, who named Van Aken to the bench last year, and Governor Newsom. She said the judge is not fit for this job and is putting all of our lives in danger. What are you waiting for? Please, you have to do something. I stopped by the Hall of Justice and watched the judge at work. She's a former San Francisco deputy city attorney who played a key role in cases involving marriage equality and presidential overreach. Her clerk said she would have no comment. The judge rejected a safety risk assessment conducted by SF Pretrial Diversion Project, which said Vincent was unsuitable for release. That finding was made after the group used a computer tool, plugging in factors like Vincent's age, criminal history, and whether he has a history of skipping court hearings. Our main concern and what drives our work is public safety and making sure people show up for court. David so. Moroff, who heads the program, said Vincent is a client and therefore he couldn't go into any details of the case, including how often Vincent must now check in with the pretrial group. He says he's not second-guessing the judge. You're asking me to get in the judge's head, and uh, you know, that's not our position, it's not our role, and I would never do that. You know, they're on the bench, and we respect their decisions. In a statement, Vincent's attorney said his client has no history of violent offenses. He said, by all accounts, this appears to have been a young man having a mental health crisis who has now been heavily charged in this incident. This isn't the first time there's been controversy involving an inmate and pretrial diversion. In 2017, just five days after a judge released Lamonta Mims from jail on a gun charge, police say he killed San Francisco photographer Ed French for his camera at Twin Peaks. Now, the suspect has pleaded not guilty in this attack. He's been ordered to return to court on September 12th. And also today, the DA, George Casco, in San Francisco says he's concerned that jailing the mentally ill is, in his belief, a band-aid solution. So he wants to make sure this defendant gets the services that he needs. Live in San Francisco, Henry Lee, KTVU, Fox 2 News. Aiken is over this case. The district attorney's office tells KPIX 5 News that Judge Van Aken was supposed to follow something called a, quote, release matrix to determine if the suspect was likely to commit another crime. But the judge went against that recommendation and released him anyway. In the last hour, the San Francisco Police Officers Association released a statement saying Judge Christine Van Aken's continued tenure overseeing criminal cases is a danger to every law-abiding resident of San Francisco. Her reckless decision to release Austin James Vincent from custody validates our call for the presiding judge to reassign Van Aken to traffic court. Both the mayor and the governor are weighing in on this case.
We're not going to be able to address what we know is a serious mental health crisis until we're prepared to make the hard decisions to basically commit people to places where they can get help. And it goes to the core of people uh, wanting to live in a city as spectacular as this. Uh, and that foundation is safety. Uh, as for the suspect, uh, Austin James Vincent, he has been ordered to stay at least 100 feet away from that condo building. Now, this case is bringing up the issue of safety on San Francisco streets, really Bay Area streets in general, but KPIX 5's Andrea Borba has some strategies that people are using now to navigate potential trouble. Andrea? Well, Ken, experts say it all comes down to paying attention to your surroundings. They say it's very hard to do that with one of these in your face. Every day, well over a million people hit the sidewalks of San Francisco. How many of those people are prepared for potential danger? I walk around by myself a lot, and I keep a pretty good eye on it. Despite that assertion, it's not hard to find someone wrapped up in their cell phone and not the street. You shouldn't be locked in the screen all the time, the black mirror. It's, it's detrimental, I think. Jimmy Choi, co-founder of Self-Defense for the People, says you need situational awareness, which you can't have if you're scrolling through Facebook while strolling. I think a lot of these days we're preoccupied on our phones, you know, tweeting, texting people, which is totally fine, but I think if you're going to engage in the city and walk around, you have to be aware of your surroundings, right? Jimmy's business partner, Joseph Batista, says next, listen to your gut. If you have it in your instincts that something doesn't feel right, trust that instinct. Humans are pretty much the only species on planet Earth that will rationalize their way out of danger. And if you feel that danger, remove yourself from the situation. The easiest thing to do is cross the street, right? Go walk around them, put as much distance between you and the other person as possible. And if that potential danger turns into actual danger, Batista says, get loud. Sometimes you can talk to them diplomatically. Sometimes you have to act a little bit aggressive and assertive to them. Sometimes you have to act crazier than them. Now, coming up to news tonight on KPIX 5 News at 7 o'clock, we take a look at one physical maneuver you can take to evade an attack as it's happening. Live in San Francisco, Andrea Borba, KPIX 5.